Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Mind of Steel. This is the weekly delve into the murky and mysterious world of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. And today we are going to explore the content of a video he recently posted called It's All Falling to Pieces for the Cult. Now, judging by the title of this video, you might assume that Mark would be gloating about his many successes in the fight against the cult that he perceives exists in opposition to him and his goals. But as we'll see, this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, this video consists entirely of Mark Steele moaning about his declining popularity, moaning about the fact that he is no longer relevant, even in the truth of movement that gave birth to the persona, the Mark Steele we know today. So, without any more delay, let's join Mark Steele as he explains to us how this so-called cult is falling to pieces. 11 people on Facebook now bouncing the communication. They don't seem to do it with anybody else. What's going on? Is it just me? Is it just me that they want to attack on here? Because it looks like there's other people who use fake book and do lives for like hours and whatever. Seem to know, but they don't have any problem at all with it. Mark seems to think that his videos by right ought to reach millions of people. He, he possesses such a strong sense of entitlement that, that his wonky, glitchy, badly filmed videos shot on a, a, a dirty lens of, of a laptop's built-in web camera. He, he thinks they should be reaching more than the 11 people who seem to have tuned in for this daily live stream. Well, Mark, unfortunately, the, the reality of running a, an online channel is it's hard. You have to provide interesting content, come up with new and original opinions. You, you have to actually take some effort, put, put, some, put some work into your craft, Mark. It's no wonder that nobody wants to look at Mark's videos when they're framed like this. Yeah, you see, I had to crop into Mark's videos to make them even slightly watchable. He just doesn't know how to use cameras. And that, I'm sure with all the other technical failings, and let's not forget the many, many content failings, makes him maybe not the most compelling offering in the competitive world of online content. Well, I did have a big, I had large social media uh, platforms, really large ones, and unfortunately they all got taken down because there was a preempted, they knew what I was going to be saying. So they had to take down what I was going to say. It's quite interesting there's people supposedly in the truth movement who still have big platforms. How does that happen? Because I can't get a big platform, but it might have something to do with what I say, like the fact. Yeah, Mark, it might have something to do with what you have to say. Like, like the fact that you tend to ramble on and on about the same things over and over again. Even an audience composed entirely of conspiracy truthers might get bored because you're not really bringing anything new to this party. It's the same old lampposts, 5G. You know, occasionally, yeah, you, you've introduced a few new things. Like I, I've noticed that these days, Mark Steele seems to be talking about the, the dangers of wireless body area networks. And that's obviously some material that Mark has cribbed from Sabrina. But he doesn't do it convincingly. And that's the problem for Mark because he's just running out of ideas and he hasn't had the time to, to workshop any new ideas. And the ones that he, he had maybe uh, taken to production, well, they're not really landing. Like, like remember his ULES grift from last year? with what I see, like the fact of they're not cameras, they're not cameras. Uh, the other thing they're really upset about is the chip. They're not They're not happy about these uh, WhatsApp, these Matt Hancock WhatsApp posts for some inexplicable reason. It's got so Mark Steele seems to think that the reason why he has been shadow banned is because he's revealed the fact that ULES cameras apparently aren't cameras. He's also covered the fact that uh, Matt Hancock sent some widely reported text messages that were jokes in somewhat bad taste about uh, some conspiracy theories related to COVID vaccines. Now, Mark Steele, 
is clearly in a state of denial. But the reason why nobody is watching him is actually because he's boring people. He's just not interesting enough to engage people. The cameras Mark Steele ought to be worrying about is the camera right in front of his face, the camera that is pointing to him right now. What, what about pointing it in the right direction? Maybe spend 20 pounds on a higher quality webcam. You could probably buy a better one from the local corner shop. That there are so many better things that, you know, Mark, I shouldn't be giving you content ideas for your live streams. You, you're, you're a big, you've been at this long enough to know how it's done. The lot of the people who've got their accounts, and there's thousands of them, aren't coming on yet because they're not being told that I'm doing a live, right? They're not being told I'm doing a live. Now, can you imagine if Facebook was working the way it's supposed to, as it does for other so-called, uh, people in the infiltrators in the truth movement. The infiltrators in the truth movement. Well, actually, Mark is referring to other truthers who are currently more successful at live streaming than he is. And that basically includes just about everybody. From what I can tell, even Cy Parry, when he goes online, he is attracting a bigger and more engaged audience. But, but it's kind of obvious why Mark Steele's audience is declining. Well, not only does he repeat the same nonsense, but he doesn't really engage with his audience all that much. All of his Telegram channels don't permit any kind of discussion or feedback. It, it's like Mark Steele really doesn't want to engage with his audience at all. And when he drives people away, when he calls everybody in his community that uh, that might even slightly disagree with him, all manner of names, he, he calls them nonces, paedophiles, infiltrated, fakes. Well, it's no wonder that people might turn to maybe more gentler forms of conspiracy entertainment. Mark, you, you've just, you've driven your best customers away. And then we realized that this censorship was absolutely horrific. Why is these other truthers not being censored? It's amazing, isn't it? These so-called truth people not, sens not censored at all. Mark is completely wrong, of course. All, all the other truthers are getting censored be because their content consists almost entirely of anti-vax conspiracy nonsense, the sort of thing that gets instantly demonetized, it gets blocked. Nobody wants to have anything to do with most of the things that the conspiracy truther movements say, which is the reason why people like Mark Steele find themselves excluded to lesser content sites like Telegram. That's where everyone banished from the mainstream content distribution platforms eventually end up. But yeah, he's wrong. Everybody is getting demonetized. Everybody is losing their income stream. Just Mark Steele tends to be losing it more. And perhaps the reason is because Mark Steele is the most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. Every time somebody thumbs up this video, that boosts what I do in the algorithm. And, and so when somebody searches for Mark Steele, they're gonna get a video by me or, or MC Toon and not a video made by Mark Steele himself. That's why people are turning away from him. It's because it's now easier than ever to find content that exposes just how ludicrous Mark Steele is. It's like they don't tell you that those WhatsApp posts that Matt Hancock posted were real. I've used them and I'm using them in a number of different statements in court cases. Mark Steele wants us to believe that the reason why we should believe him and not his rival truther, Laura Nina, is that uh, Mark Steele has taken Matt Hancock's uh, WhatsApp text messages and used them in a statement in a court case that he believes he is somehow involved with. Now, I, I think this is wrong on many levels. Like, for, for starters, if Mark Steele really was involved with active litigation, I think we'd know about it. And, and the reason is because he'd be begging for money to cover his legal expenses. Now, Mark Steele is always begging for money, but he hasn't actually mentioned any specific court case that he's involved with, uh, which I think is a very good sign that the court cases he's referring to are entirely fictional. Or if they're not fictional, they're ones in which his involvement in them is purely in Mark Steele's imagination. The only 
thing that is being tried is our patience, because Mark Steele seems to be rehashing the exact same arguments. Or rather, he's saying to his 11 dedicated fans, the things that he wishes he had the courage to say to Laura Nina's face, but really can't, because when it comes to debating and his online presence, Mark Steele is a coward. All of his online forums, well, they're not forums at all. They're transmit-only channels. Mark Steele wants to have his say, but really can't stand to be spoken back to. That's what I mean by he's a coward. He, he just can't take disagreement or criticism of any kind. Because obviously, not only have I got the statement made in a WhatsApp post, which is bona fide, but I also have the electron microscope spectrum analysis of you know what. You know, the thing that will get you banned. And Mark Steele has been banned from pretty much every video sharing network, except for the likes of BitChute and Rumble, the places that have no standards at all and attract only the, the, the strangest people who want to be titillated by just bizarrely wrong conspiracy content. That's why people just aren't paying attention to Mark. It's nothing to do with a vast conspiracy to shut him out of Facebook and YouTube. And it's everything to do with the fact that Mark Steele continues to knowingly repeat bogus claims, ridiculous conspiracy theories, utter nonsense, which he knows will get him banned. Uh, and what a surprise. It does. That's what happens. Mark Steele has played foolish games and won the most foolish of prizes. The prize is his own banishment from polite society. The fact that nobody, not even Facebook, wants to have anything to do with him. I mean, he's seen Andrew Bridgens following on Facebook. I mean, it should be it should be 200,000 people. It's not. And if he puts any posts out, he's a bit like me. They don't get seen. Nobody can see him. So It's a miracle that Andrew Bridgen reaches anybody. Andrew Bridgen is officially Britain's most bizarre MP. He's almost certainly going to be voted out in the next election because his own constituency largely hates him. He's going to be a one-term MP. Mark still just has no sense of what is likely to interest people. Nobody watches his stuff. Nobody watches Andrew Bridgen's stuff because now that we're no longer in the pandemic, there's a limited audience for completely crazy anti-vax nonsense. It just, it's just not selling well. And the people who continually push this kind of content, well, they're finding that the audiences just keep diminishing. Problem is, it's basically, on, especially on Facebook, for people like me, it's like talking into a cul-de-sac. It's all it is. It's talking to people that already know. Everybody watching this, no. The only potential, you share it with anybody and others won't see it. I watched the, I'm watching the metrics. I'm watching them attacking, they're attacking the feed now. Mark believes that he is watching the feed being attacked now. He, he imagines himself as some kind of five-star general in the military bunker where the movie War Games was set. And, and he's watching the, the Soviet missiles fly in and, and he's under attack. He's considering his strategic countermeasures against this onslaught from the evil empire. Well, or, or really, what's actually happening, Mark Steele is, has just got a, a glitchy old laptop. It, it still runs Windows Vista. He hasn't upgraded. He, he's got a, a crappy built-in camera. It, it's covered with whatever sludge and dust has accumulated in, in Mark's house. Some chip grease, perhaps? And maybe he's just got a rubbish domestic internet connection that, that isn't up to the job of streaming, not even low quality feeds that Mark still does. He, he's just not a good streamer and he doesn't understand the technology, which is why every single thing he does looks like crap. And you know, I want Mark Steele's stuff to look good because if Mark Steele's content looks good, then my content looks good because I have to include Mark's content in my videos. So come on, Mark, do us all a favor. Get a better webcam. Buy They're attacking the feed now, dropping the feed every few seconds. I can take a snapshot. I'm going to take a snapshot and show you, but have a look on my page. There's lots of really good stuff on that page today. All right. Mark Steele didn't actually post a screenshot of 
the, uh, the feed under attack, as he claimed. He never really posts evidence of anything. I, I, I'm sure even the 11 people who still watch Mark Steele's daily feeds get a bit tired of his lies. The, the fact that actually nothing he ever promised ever got delivered. Those court victories that, that he claims he's going to win for them, well, they don't ever happen. The, the money he says that they're going to, to win in compensation for damage due to injections, well, that was also a lie. The, the benefits of, of being a member of the Save Us Now political party, there aren't any. Absolutely everything Mark does and says is just dishonest, self-serving nonsense. There's, there's nothing to it. And maybe even those last 11 followers, the people still watching Mark after all this time, well, maybe they'll get bored too. And soon he'll be down to five and then three. And then maybe just Mark's brother Graham will be the last person watching the Save Us Now daily broadcast. Well, that's crazy, crazy, Joseph. Right, anyway, God bless you, everybody. I'm off. I'm just going to try and enlighten as many people as I possibly can to the crime that's being committed on us. And so there we must leave Mark as he wanders off, trying to enlighten as many people as he can to the terrible crimes that have been committed against us. And, and I'm sure as many people as he can is a number probably less than five. Uh, maybe he'll be preaching to the converted. He'll perhaps enlighten people in a pub where, where he has a, a big miserable moan about the ways that Facebook is deprioritizing, shadow banning and demonetizing his content. He'll, he'll talk about how he's been kicked off YouTube, how all the judges in the land who've laughed his cases out of court are unfair, being mean to him. And he'll also complain about Laura Nina and all the other people in the truth and movement who've disagreed with him and are therefore evil people. Well, they might be, but it's not for that reason. Oh, Mark, his sense of entitlement and injustice is, is just palpable. You, you could feel the rage coming off him because he believes he's entitled to an, an enormous audience. And now he's feeling this strange sense of loss, a, a strange sense of loneliness, as the people who once followed him have got new truthers to follow, new conspiracy theories to, to get hot and bothered about. And Mark still just can't seem to adapt. Ah, oh, well, I hope that's not the end for Mark, because if he goes, then I go. The only thing I can suggest, though, is that when Mark still finds himself a little bit beleaguered, he gets funnier. And this is my begging bit. If you want to help the YouTube algorithm find me and not him, a, a little thumbs up would do a world of good. So if you've enjoyed watching it this far, click that upwards pointing thumb and uh, know that if you do so, it will result in an infinitesimally greater amount of misery for Mark Steele.